Televisa presenta Flor del Pueblo. Hola Guadalupe, ¿cómo estás? Flor, te tengo que decir algo. Sí, 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 claro, dime. Yo soy tu madre. Pero tú no eres mi madre, yo ya tengo mi madre. Bueno, ella es tu padre. That was literally almost any telenovela that I watched, so that was entertaining. Hola a todos, bienvenidos un día más en mi canal. Yo soy Moe Blue, and today we're going to talk about telenovelas. Okay, as you can see, I left my makeup on and everything because I really found it entertaining, so I was really lazy to change. So now I'm here as Guadalupe. Since I moved away from Serbia, I've heard this question a lot. Why do all Balkan people know Spanish? And I can only talk about Serbia because that's where I grew up. Let's go some 30 years back. When I was really young, telenovelas or Spanish soap operas or Spanish series were something that was very prominent. So you would, you know, go about your day, you go to school or go to work, depending on which age you are. You would go home and watch telenovelas and that was just our normal day. One disclaimer, in Serbia we say Spanish series, but that does not mean that these are series from Spain, just that they are series in Spanish. Um, and most of the series come from Mexico or Venezuela or um, some other countries. So some of the ones from my youth that I can actually remember are uh, Cassandra, Esmeralda, Florecita, uh, La Usurpadora, Llovisna, Tres Mujeres, Mujer de Judas, and I can just go on because there's so, so many other soap operas. So these are just some that I could actually remember the name, uh, but other ones I do remember, but I just don't know what the title is. You would go home and you would watch the novelas and it was something like relaxing time, binding time, even though you weren't really talking to anyone, um, just watching the series. But it was something the way where um, you would experience together and then later on you can talk about it. You would feel like this one hour that you have, you're just enjoying yourself and you know, relaxing and even though it's really not, not that relaxing, but afterwards you will want more because what telenovelas give you is you enter a new reality and there's a lot of adventurous stuff happening, a lot of drama and I feel like Serbians as a people love drama, um, not necessarily in their personal life but love watching it and I feel anyone is entertained by, by it. So this is the reason why Spanish series were very popular uh, in our country and I'm not only talking about Serbia, I'm talking about Bosnia and probably Montenegro and Albania, Bulgaria, I'm sure many more countries. I haven't lived there so I don't really know what the history is but these became very popular. Not that we didn't have other series but they were not that frequent and I think later on they became more popular like something in Turkish this is something that we have right now um, they're very popular then we have Indian series and uh, I think even Italian series and we even have a series from Spain um, and this is where I actually kind of learned a bit of the accent I don't really know which series we have right now because I haven't lived in Serbia for quite a while but this is something that you can update me but you can understand the situation and the context I think one crucial thing that helps you learn a language is having subtitles. So we would always have movies and series that are not dubbed. So that's very important so you can actually hear the language. So you would hear every day for several hours Spanish from Mexico and you would just, you know, after several years, you would actually understand what they're saying. You wouldn't need to read subtitles, especially when you're younger. I feel like when we're kids, we're open to many languages because we're still learning a language. So I feel that we are way more perceptive of different um, teeny tiny details. So something about pronunciation or grammar, and um, this is how we actually learned it. So we don't necessarily know how to speak Spanish or how to talk in Spanish, but we can actually understand 90% of what they're saying. I feel that the majority of their sounds actually overlaps with ours and that's definitely something that helps. Again, regarding the sound system, um, the sound system that they have in words is usually vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, and this is something that we have in Serbian as well. Again, you have consonant clusters, but we have it as well in Serbian, so it gets even worse in Serbian. So uh, I feel like in this respect, the languages are very similar. So for example, you have a word in Spanish like semáforo, 
uh, which is traffic light, and the Serbian you call it semaphore, which is very, very similar. And yes, we do have some words that are um, shared or they're borrowed maybe from Spanish, from Latin, but they, we don't have a lot of them. So I feel like more impact is coming from English. So throughout my life, I've actually heard Spanish language and I've maintained it, obviously, by watching these series or some movies. And at a certain point, I decided that I actually wanted to learn it. And at that point, I was watching series from Spain. So when I decided to learn the sound system and the writing system and everything, I actually um, looked at uh, Castellano from Spain. If you hear something very weird in my dialect or my way of speaking Spanish, well, first of all, you can hear my Serbian accent. And second thing is that, no, I don't have a Mexican accent, uh, but most of the people from Serbia will have. So if you come across someone from Serbia or Bosnia, the chances are that they're gonna understand your language. So be careful with what you're saying. However, that doesn't mean that they can speak the language. So because we don't really have a context where we use Spanish. This is something where we need more practice and which I'm currently doing. And it's really difficult. It's really difficult when you have all of this knowledge in your head and you can't really use it because you've never used it, so you know, you get, have to get used to it. But practice is what um, learning the language needs. Bueno, pues ahora me voy a despedir. Gracias a todos por ver mi video. Ha sido muy interesante y nos vemos un otro día. Adiós!